Okay, lots of people have asked about um, the painting and staining and, and decorating that I do on faux leathers and corks. So I'm going to start off with some cork because that's what I grabbed first. Um, and what I use are on cork are Indian inks. I've got lots of these. Um, they come in all manner of colours. Let's just start with... Let's grab some blue and some green. I need to get them all out. Pop that out of the way because I know that I'm dropping it on the floor. And I have a piece of cork here. Now this is um, the cork that has the sort of gold flecks through it. I think you can probably see that. And a paintbrush. Um, all I will say is the best quality paintbrush that you can afford. Um, those sort of plastic things that you buy from the range that are children's paintbrushes are not really going to cut the mustard. You need a selection of paintbrushes. Um, and I've got all sorts here. There's flat paintbrushes. There's ones with the long, thin, uh, tiny uh, bristles and what have you. Um, paintbrushes come in all qualities and the better the quality of the paintbrush the better the quality of finish that you're going to get now i like to use indian inks on um oh, that's not going to work is it i usually put it in a little pot and i haven't bought a little pot in with me so i'm going to use a smaller paintbrush um i like to use indian inks on cork simply because um, i want the cork to show through now quite often this is the basic sort of brown colour that you get and it's a lot cheaper usually than the coloured corks so if you want to change the colour just load up your paintbrush and very evenly paint your ink on now there are small indentations in this cork because cork, it's it's a, a fabric where the cork bits are being placed onto the front of a a plastic a sort of a a cotton woven backing. Um, it's not completely flat the front part of your cork, so you might need to go over a couple of times just to make sure that you've got everything filled in. And often where the little dents are in the cork, and I'm not sure if you can actually see that because it's wet, you get a slightly darker um color but basically you can change the color of your cork just by painting on indian ink and if you put a couple of layers on it'll get darker but you're st it's still slightly opaque so you'll still be able to see the cork now i did i showed you a sort of an ombre effect let's try and show you how that i'm not cleaning my brush i'm just gonna Add some of the second colour below. And then I'm just going to go over the join where the green and the blue meet. Now I've added a little tiny bit of water, which just helps to thin the ink down and allows that to just blend slightly. And what you end up with is this wonderful ombre look. Now, I love doing this on the cork that has the gold or the silver flecks because the gold and silver flecks do not pick up the paint um, and you still see the gold and silver through. And you can go over this as many times as you want. You could add lots of different colours and make a rainbow ombre effect. Um, but you can see there that there's no line between the green and the blue. It's quite shiny because it's still wet. Um, once it's dry, it goes quite matte. But you get that sort of ombre effect between the blue and the green. And you could do that with any colours that you wanted to. I'm just going to clean my brush off. Grab my faithful... I've got a very old tea towel that I literally use for cleaning my brushes. Now, if you wanted to do, um, you could do, you could 
do a color wash of one color and then you can paint a design on if you wanted to. You can be as artistic as you want to be. It really depends on how artistic you are. You could, if you wanted to, use a, um, a silver pen to draw your design on. Silver pens are designed for sewing on, uh, for drawing on faux leather, but they also work very well on cork. Let me just grab a silver pen. So this is a silver pen. This is just the it refill. I don't actually put it in the plastic pen bit. I just use the, whoops, the refill. Um, and you can, let me just, if I just draw some circles. Well, let me see if you can see the circles that I've drawn. Actually, probably not because they're sort of slightly metallic. But I've drawn circles onto my cork. And you can then fill in your design. I must admit, I generally do most of my designs freehand. Um, I will often mark out where things need to be, either with a chalk marker or with a, a silver pen. If you go, if you use a silver pen, it should be able to easily wash off with just a little bit of um, a damp cloth once the ink is dried. Um, don't try and rub it off until the ink is dry because it will come off with it. Um, it's just a question of being quite light with the ink. And if you've drawn a design on, then you're basically just colouring in with a paintbrush. Now, for some paints you can buy a sort of a pen that you can fill with paint so that you can color in almost like a felt tip pen um ink because it's liquid not viscous you can't do that with because it just runs out of the end ask me how i know i've tried it um i thought it might be easier it wasn't it just made a god awful mess and wasted a lot of ink so there you go you've got spots you can you can kind of be as creative or as extravagant as you want to be Use the appropriate paintbrush for what you're wanting to do. So if you've got a very, very delicate design, use a small paintbrush, small amounts of paint and do it slowly. And it does take time. Um, nothing happens quickly. Nothing good ever happens quickly anyway. Um, if you get carried away and go hell for leather, you're stuck. Now, if you make a mistake with this Indian ink, unfortunately, there's very little you can do with it because it does, it permeates the surface of the of the cork um, and it will stain the cork. So if you're using a, a dark blue and you suddenly think, oh no, I've made a terrible mistake. Let me just, if I just wet this and try and show you what will happen. Now, if I try and take off one of these spots. I'm just rubbing that with some water. But you can see it's left a sort of a stain on the on the cork. Now, if you're using a lighter colour, you may well be able to get rid of most of it and then perhaps colour over the top. But it does stain the cork quite quickly, especially the darker colours. Um, and you end up with a quite a... A, an unpleasant looking it almost looks like a bruise on your um on your uh, cork now what you could do then if you've got a bruise on your cork is just go over it and you've covered it over then but it may not be part of your design this Indian ink is just lovely stuff to it because it's very, very liquid. It kind of goes an awful long way. You can water it down. So if you want to add a bit of water and get a slightly more ombre look just with one colour, you can do. You get to a point where there's no ink and it's all water. And because cork is actually waterproof, what you'll end up with is nothing. So. 
you do have to be quite careful. It's about experimenting, really. I think you can probably see that that's a much more sort of ombre look. So you've got a lighter bit here. It's difficult, actually, because where it's wet, the light reflects off of it. Um, but it's it's darker here and lighter over here because I've mixed it with water. You do have to leave it to dry. Um, messing about with it when it's wet will just mess it up. So you need to leave it to dry and then add another coat if you want a deeper or richer colour. Um, but the Indian inks, you can see on this end, they dry, they dry quite quickly. Um, and you've got that lovely ombre between the, the green and the blue. And then on this end, which is still a little bit wet, it goes from the darker blue to the lighter blue. As we kind of come down, I've just used one colour and I've just added water to it. And you still get that lovely look of the cork through, which I, I, I can't see any point in painting on cork per se. Um, certainly not if you're going to do the, a whole thing, because if you, if you use paints, they're opaque um, and you won't see the cork through. So what's the point of using cork? You, cork is expensive. So if you're going to use cork, you want the cork to show through. Um, and I'd say I particularly love this stuff that's got the gold or silver flecks in it, which is actually quite cheap. Um, this came from uh, BST, um, I think it's called BST, yeah, I'm not sure, um, very cheap, very cheap, certainly cheaper than the Portuguese cork. I think this has um, some vinyl included in it, it's not as good a quality cork as the stuff that you get from Portugal, um, but it's actually really nice to sew with, it's not too thick. Um, but it does come only in a couple of colours. So um, that's why I buy it, because it's cheap. Um, and then I just colour it myself. Um, and you can see the, the effect with the metallic bits. You get this lovely sheen to it, um, which is just really effective. This, this end is now started to dry, so you can see slightly better the ombre effect. So that's Indian inks. I can't teach you how to draw because that's something that you either have or you don't have. It's a skill you, you have. You don't have to be able to draw a picture um, to be artistic. You just have to be able to make a design that looks good. Make sure you clean your paintbrushes off really well um, because Indian inks tend to bleed on other things if you've um, got them on your paintbrushes. So make sure you've cleaned your paintbrushes off really well. And once you've cleaned your paintbrushes, Make sure that they're nice and flat and you haven't got any bits sticking out. Um, and most paintbrushes will come with, or some paintbrushes will come with, almost like a little plastic sleeve that you put over the ends of your paintbrush. Now, you can see that that is oh, perfect. Can you see? Yes, you can. It's perfectly flat. There's no bristles sticking out and that's how I want it to dry. So I will leave that sitting on the side until it's dry. Likewise, my, my thinner brush, no bristles sticking out. If you have any bristles that stick out, just chop them off um, because a bristle that sticks out is gonna give you an extra line of, of ink when you're painting and you don't want that. So make sure that your paint brushes are, are kept in good condition. I'm just waiting for this last little dot to dry, to dry and I don't know if, let me just pop the tops on these because I know that I'm going to knock them over. And Indian ink goes an awful long way. I have a really nice stain on my wooden floor where I threw a bottle of Indian ink on the floor. Um, I keep a, a box on it because I don't want my husband to see what I did to our beautiful pine floors. Um, now, I'm really not sure if you can see this, but round these dots, there is a silver line where I use that silver pen. Now, that should, and I would suggest you use clean water and I'm actually just using the stuff that I've cleaned my um, paintbrushes in, so it's probably not ideal. You should be able to dab that and get those, that's not completely dry, but get those silver marks off. Um, It's not completely dry so it's not actually going to come off now once this is fully dry and i would say leave it overnight to dry it will not move 
I've done this and I've used it on things um, that have been used in bathrooms first. So uh, I made a, a couple of twist pouches, which um, I made into sort of uh, wash bag type things. So I put a waterproof lining inside so they get wet quite regularly. This does not come off. Um, it's not dry yet. I can still feel it's damp. Let me just, I don't know if I... Never tried this, so this is a bit of an experiment. We'll see what happens if I... No, that is smudging because it's still not quite dry. Um, but once it's fully dry, it will not come off. It, it literally stays put completely. Um, unless you do lots of layers. If you do a lot of layers, sometimes you get... Um, it, get, it will come off on your fingers. Um, so if you do a lot of layers to get a deeper look, I would suggest once you finish taking a clean rag and just wiping it across the, the design to take any excess off. Um, but minimal layers works better. It's, it's just a really interesting finished look. So that's the sort of ombre look on cork, um, either in one color where I've just added water or in two colours where I've just blended the two together um, using a little bit of water to, to blend them together. The only thing if you're going to do ombre is that you need to do it at the same time. It's no good doing one colour, going away and then coming back and doing the second colour the second time because the first colour will seal and, and set hard and you want to be able to sort of blend those colours at the, the mix part. So that's your painting on cork really. Draw your design if you want to, use um, chalk or use a leather pen um you can actually paint over the top of the leather pen and it's fine it won't it won't come off um ombre add water just to blend the colors in together indian inks by the best that you can afford um you can buy cheap ones they're not as good and the colors aren't as vibrant these are liquid raw indian inks and they work really well i also have some by another let me just put these away another company that I found work really nicely and I'll just grab them so that I can tell you what company they're made by because I can't remember off the top of my head oh good god I've got so much stuff in here it's untrue um all right so this these ones are made by I say Mars and it does say waterproof Indian ink on there um, and they work really nicely. Is that ISO Mars as well? Yeah, that's ISO Mars as well. They're all ISO Mars in there. I don't know why I keep them separately because they're the same thing, but there we go. So that's your Indian inks onto um, cork. Now I've never tried Indian inks on uh, vinyl. And I don't really know why, but I've never tried it. Um, Indian inks also work really nicely on craft texts. Um, the only thing with craft texts is sometimes if you've pre-washed it, it will bleed slightly. So if you want a really sharp edge on a design, um, don't use Indian inks. But if you want to do the ombre look, it, it's quite porous, so it will sink in really quickly. So you have to be quick doing it. Um, but it works. It works. Um, the easier way to, um, if you wanted to do it on craft text so that it doesn't bleed so much, is to add a very, very thin layer of, um, what's it called? The stuff that you use to waterproof things, eau de coat. So a very, very thin layer of eau de coat over your um, craft text will seal it slightly so that it doesn't um, bleed as much and then you get a much easier it's a much easier surface to work on you don't have to be quite so quick because it's not quite so porous um, and if you're worried about things coming off you could add a layer of eau de coat over the top if you really wanted to I've never done it um, I've never needed to uh, but you could do um, and I have used eau de coat on cork to give it a slight sheen because cork is quite matte and I wanted, I, I was using, I can't remember what I was making even, but I was, I was using a plain um, cork without any metal bits um, and it's very matte finished and I wanted it to look slightly shiny. So I used eau de coat on it to give it a slight sheen, which worked um, and it's survived. So it, it didn't peel off, which is good. Um, that's cork, that's cork and Indian ink.
and I'll go and grab some um, faux leather and I'll do a bit about faux leather.